Welcome to Modern Work Mentor. We're going to unbox flexible sections in SharePoint. This is a new creative way of being able to place things on a page. I'm going to focus just on flexible sections. I won't get too drawn into the capabilities of each web part, but I just want to show you a few tips and things that I've found while playing uh, around with this. All right, so flexible sections to start with. This is a new page and uh, you have to add a new flexible section. It is uh, something you can't just change an existing section to flexible. Um, what are flexible sections? Well, uh, up until now, we've had the uh, columns that we use or maybe, you know, full width type ways of putting content on a page as a three column and I could drag a text a web part in here, an image web part here. Um, let's just drop uh, an image in there and then maybe some quick links over in this part. So very rigid ways of being able to put things on a page. Uh, but the flexible section is something that we can, uh, we can add. So let's just get rid of this one to start with and uh, we'll add our flexible section. Um, to start with, it, it looks like a, a regular old uh, section. Uh, it does have a handle down the bottom here though to be able to drag and resize the content. And you already see that within the section we've got a grid pattern uh, with some guides as a way of being able to help place our content in the section. Uh, that is going to resize based on content as we're dropping it in here. All right, so let's uh, drag a web part out onto the page. We'll start off with the text box. Yeah, as I'm doing that, it is aligning with the grid pattern that's there. And also as we hover kind of around the middle of the page, you start to see like that little red line to say that is the middle of the page, the web part, your content will be centered horizontally. We don't have the same, oh, actually there it is. <laughs> we get the same centering uh, around the height, the current height of this flexible section. Uh, did, when I tried that earlier, that was not the case. But let's, um, I want to put this text over and off to the left so we can have some content on the right. Uh, we'll uh, change that quickly to a heading two. And this is going to be ability objectives. Program objectives of the sustainability program. Right. Um, as we have uh, added this web part to our page, uh, to our section, um, one thing I want to show you here is that you know, if I wanted to drag this somewhere else in the grid, it's not as simple as just clicking uh, the whole web part. Use the handles on the toolbar just above. So that allows us to drag the content around and, and reposition it. Uh, we'll put that back over here. Uh, with the text web part, we can you know, drag it to the full width. We can drag it so that it matches the, the grid pattern. Um, seems to be able to actually sort of release it. No, no, so as I release it, it does pull to the side of where that grid actually um, shows. Right, so it is matching that grid. Just resize it back here. Let's add a second web part. We're going to add an image. Now one thing that I'm doing here, and it's the best way to get web parts on, is that if you hover at the top of a section like you might normally hear with one of our traditional classic sections, if I could call them those, is you get a button to say I want to add a web part in that space. Uh, whereas in a flexible section, you'll need to have your toolbox open on the on the right hand side. And if you want to see all your tools, all your web parts, you can click on see all web parts to select and drag and drop. We'll drag an image web part over. So uh, this uh, now, and you can see it's not quite going to fit in this space. So is it going to resize? Yes, it does. Interesting that it does that um, by just holding and waiting for it to resize. Um, we'll upload a new image. Let's go and find mm, that one there of my desktop. Not really a sustainability image, but we get the idea. Upload and add that. And we'll probably just reshape that to be something like a pebble. So you're getting the sense here that I can Again, use the handles above and drag that image to wherever I want it to be in this section. Um, one thing that you might experiment with uh, is dragging that text over the top. Uh, and you already see that there's this concept of layers. Um, in fact, as we look at that toolbar, you'll see there's a new layer button that allows us to 
uh, and we're very familiar with this within Microsoft products like PowerPoint and Word, that you can bring things to the front or maybe just step it back one layer, bring it forward one layer as we go. Um, so what have I got selected here? The text, I'll bring that forward, I'll bring it to the front. Ooh, okay, and this is our first uh, experience of what you will find with working with these flexible sections that at the moment feels kind of buggy. Uh, I'll point this out as we go, but it sort of rearranges content and pushes things out of the position that you want it to be in. So my first tip, so you don't get driven crazy, is that you actually drag the content that you want onto the flexible section, get the things out onto the canvas, so to speak, and then position them and resize them as needed. So let's actually go through some of those exercises and then we'll start working with um, the actual content. I do want a second text box. Um, I want to be able to just place that in under here and then actually add some paragraph text around that. Um, I want to add a quick links web part. So we'll drag that onto here. Um, I'm going to get rid of this image web part because I actually want to put there in place of it a stream web part to show like an introduction video to the sustainability program. So let's delete that and we'll drag out our stream web part. Mm, there it is. Um, okay, so it looks pretty big and that's because the default uh, web part sizing and choice uh, is the gallery or theater. So it, it selects all those different videos on your site. I'm just gonna change this now to a single video and we'll choose a video for it um, so that it's more focused on how I want it to be. Again, don't get too hung up about placement and content at this point. Uh, what else do I want? I wanna bring in a, a people web part to show this the lead for the program. So back to our toolbox, see all web parts, go down to the people web part in the news, people and events section, and um, we'll add, let's say, program lead, and find a person. And we might actually just change that to a medium card. Right. Um, one other thing that I'd like to do with this section and with content is I want to highlight some news, latest news that might have been shared around the sustainability effort. So if we use our news web part, we'll drag that out onto the page as well. Um, again, it's... Uh, not too worried too, too much about placement and sizing just yet, but we've got our news web part and I just want to focus this in on specific stories. So I'm going to edit the web part, go into select news to organize and drag the story that I want out onto that page there. So that is limited and it's only going to show things as and when I want to show them. Good. Okay, so we've got our content. One other thing that I want to do to just bring a bit of focus to this section is I'm going to give it a background. So we'll add a background. Uh, I've got the select the section selected and I've chosen add background and we'll go into one of my video asset folders and we'll choose the background here. Now that background as it comes up, that's quite nice. It gives it kind of a level of focus. Um, you, you, you kind of, uh, I guess, have some separation between this white page and the content. And as flexible sections do change size, uh, this section um, is currently set, let's have a look at these settings, to scale to fill. And that means that this one big 19 by 1920 by 1080 image it is going to kind of just zoom in and get bigger. Uh, but it is the kind of image that I can tile. So I am going to change this to tile so that it, um, it still maintains the same size of the objects in the background and just repeats as a pattern. Great, we've got content on there now. Uh, actually, there was one other thing I was going to do, which is add some content to the text web box, uh, text box about the sustainability program. And we'll paste that into here. Now we can work on layering and positioning the content because at the moment it absolutely is a mess. Um, the other thing that I found too is that with the toolbox open, you're not truly seeing the real size of what the section looks like on the page. 
So it pays to tuck that toolbox out of the way and now we can actually see how it will look and you can see um, because all the content is on the page and it's sort of a bit of a mishmash but I've got like this thinner side to the right and a lot more space over here on the, on the left. So I want to have a look at that to kind of balance up the content and the layout. Um, so let's get to it. Um, I still want to have my heading kind of off to the left and we'll align the text box of course to that. As I'm doing that I've got some blue outlines to the text boxes themselves so that's good for aligning the text and making sure it all measures up nicely. Um, I'm going to just maybe give that a bit more room and similarly with the text over here. Right, so that's all resizing the text nicely as part of that. I certainly don't want the people web part to be overlapping so we'll drag that down below the text um, and this is again one of the bugs that we're seeing in the first release of the flexible sections is that um, is I don't know whether it's collision avoidance or it's detecting things that are overlapping that probably shouldn't but it now just resized a bunch of my text so maybe we'll just drag this people web part way the heck down here and um, hmm, we'll maybe out to the side different web parts do def def definitely sort of tend to misbehave um, and now that I've got that it's not quite what I wanted it to be and the benefit of having flexible sections is you truly can put your content anywhere in the section and it'll snap to the grid. The downside of it is that you don't have the nice tidy really rigid way of saying I know I can drop this content in this middle column or the second column and it all just aligns nicely. Uh, it is more your responsibility to lay this out the way that you want it to. Um, and it just makes me kind of nervous as I you know, I want to get this positioned where I want it to be, um, but as I draw closer to it, I expect it to jump around. Again, very buggy. Um, we'll drag our news web part a bit further down. We'll drag our quick links uh, here, and I'm going to add a couple to it. So we'll call that related resources, and add a couple of links. Uh, first of all, the webinar page to promote and then also maybe a document. Now it's not titled as a sustainability document but you get the idea. Two resources that are there. Um, again strangeness with placement and if, I, if it hasn't been illustrated enough already this first release um, will drive you a little balmy as you want to position your content. So you might not quite be able to get the effect that you're after um, because it tends to shuffle itself around. And I've got to wonder what kind of effect is that going to have when you're looking at it on different screen sizes. Um, side comment, we know that columns um, uh, would tend to if you were looking at it at a narrower screen size it would go from left to right so if you've got a three column section then it would do the first section then the second section would go below the third section below that not sure what it's going to prioritize here in terms of the content but we'll, we'll have a look if we just drag the the edges um, so it's not quite the look that i'm looking for but you get the idea it is definitely um definitely flexible definitely flexible okay so uh, let's save the page. What does this look like? It still doesn't feel balanced, does it? It's sort of over to the right and to the left. I'm not going to bore you with making me watching you, or rather you watching me dragging content around on the page, uh, but you get the idea. What I'm interested in now is can we drag this and see what happens with the content? Woo, okay. It sort of obeys what I'm looking for. Does some kind of weird stuff there with the text um, and the text boxes. It's overlapping now the people web part. And I think this is why 
SharePoint's trying to be helpful here and it's throwing the web part into a place where it knows it's not going to overlap, but here we have it, it's, uh, it's got trouble. Um, whoops, we'll go back into here, drag that a bit further, and as we get narrower, it is repositioning things. So that still is true to form, which means that as it gets narrower to that, what can I say, almost mobile single column view that we were used to using, um, the flexible section is going to um, show the content. Well, it's, it's somehow it's understanding that I do want it to look like that, and it isn't going from left to right and then down. Um, so it's done a good job in this sense. Not too bad. But yeah, I'm not quite too happy with this placement. It is still um, a little buggy in that sense. Um, one other thing I was going to say that there, it seems to be some indications to um, how the tools may work um, soon. You know, as, as we're working with different objects on a canvas like this, we might want to select multiple objects, group them together, or maybe align certain objects with other objects. And we get those sort of guidelines as we drag them. Right, so I could drag this video so that I can see just with, I guess, a blue line there as it's aligning with the sustainability objectives heading text box um, that I can get it to align like that. And alignment has been a challenge for sure <laughs> with, with um, even sections that we might use in a traditional sense, column sections. Um, but yeah, it's it's like I'm still having trouble here with, I would like to be able to multi-select. So if I was to hold down shift and then hold down shift again, nope, not really doing it. Um, and that's just selecting the text as if it was a regular web page. So it's not really understanding the concept of I want to select multiple objects. And yet underneath the tools here, um, well, underneath the kind of arrange items, we do have this option to group and ungroup op, uh, objects. So um, there's the indication that there will be uh, the ability to do that, I believe. Okay, um, I think that is about it. Look, there's going to be tons of examples of working with content in these new flexible uh, canvas sections. This is really just a, a first initial impressions, um, looking at it and saying, here's some of the things that I think will help you as you start to explore it. You know, top of the thing, top of the <laughs> top tip here is get your content onto the page, your different web parts that you want, open the toolbox up on the right and drag and drop them. Don't worry about placement yet, just get the things that you want on there and then tuck that toolbox away and start working on your layout and how you want it to look. Resizing things, aligning things, uh, and then you'll, you'll go for that look and feel. Right, that was, uh, that was uh, Flexible Sections. Uh, this is Modern Work Mentor. Uh, hopefully this has been helpful to you. You're going to try these things out yourself, of course, um, and you know, enjoy playing with it. Uh, give your feedback to Microsoft, let them know. Um, how you feel and what you would like to see change for this uh, this new feature, this new flexible section. But it is quite revolutionary from a SharePoint design sense. Um, I, I really do hope to see it improve and, and become easier to work with because we will be able to do a lot more with our news pages, our intranet pages, our communication sites. Daryl is a service of Modern Work Mentor. We'll see you again soon. Bye for now.